I would like to share with you today a, an experience that happened to me July 20th, 2009. Um, it is an experience that will, that literally changed my life. I have never been the same since then. But it's something I think that everyone needs to know about. On July 20th, 2009, I died from a massive coronary and went straight to hell. I had this demon slither around me, around my shoulders, real, real reptilious looking, um, chemical type hair, millions of teeth, got right in my face and said, I got you now. I looked down, I seen demons all around me, chewing me up. Uh, I panicked, I freaked out, and I screamed out, God! And then the battle took place uh, for my soul. I was saved when I was 14 years old, uh, 1978. Um, I was brought up uh, undenominational type belief. Later on, we uh, migrated into a Southern Baptist belief church. We went. I went to Summer Grove Baptist Church, uh, and I was taught to believe in once saved, always saved. But I'm here to tell you right here, right now, that's not the truth, and it's a false doctrine. It's a lie that's fed straight from Satan, because the Bible says we pick up our cross daily and follow Him. I uh, had no doubt about my original conversion. I uh, was on fire for the Lord, but uh, some things occurred and happened to me uh, with, within the church, within church elders, and uh, I got burnt, and I put my eyes on man. I uh, put my eyes on hypocrisy that was all throughout the church, and when you put your eyes on man, he'll always let you down. Always. And so I knew the scripture that said that I'd rather you be cold or hot because you're lukewarm. I speak you out of my mouth. And uh, I said, okay, I uh, was hot for you. Now I'm fixing to be hot for Satan. And along went my path of self-destruction. Uh, I... A week after the age of 17, I moved out on my own, uh, middle of my high school year, uh, high school senior year, and um, got mixed up in drugs, uh, all the wrong choices, the stupid choices that a young adult makes, and tried everything I could to get on and off, um, get help and get away from the drugs, but uh, it seemed that Satan wanted me badly. And uh, he tried everything in his power to steal my soul. And he almost succeeded. And that's what happened July 20th. Uh, for reasons unknown to me, I can't explain it. It blew my heart up. And the battle, like I said, ensued over my soul. Uh, Satan threw all kinds of horrible, evil, god-awful thoughts in my head. The worst things you can think of. The worst sins possible. And God kept putting his love out. And when we say love, it's, it's so overrated, so overused. God's love is a perfect love. It's like a warm blanket. It just it wraps around you. It surrounds you. It, it's perfect. And um, this went back and forth from things getting light to dark, light to dark. And then finally Satan said, uh, I'm right here right now. You see me. Feel me. Where is your God? So he tried using doubt. And I started thinking about it, and I said, you know what, God, I need you. And he's right. Where are you? And <laughs> he appeared. All my life, I wanted to see him. And he was right there in my face, holding his hand out. He said, just take my hand. And every time I would reach out to take his hand, Satan's demons would sit there and throw all these horrible thoughts in my head, everything I couldn't do, and... And it was crazy. It was insane. It didn't make sense. And finally, you know, this went back and forth, back and forth. And I, I just, I was inundated with, I was wore out. I was physically, mentally, and spiritually just beat down. And I said, you know what, God? I don't care if I live in a cardboard box. I don't care what happens to my life. I, I don't care. I'm yours. I give you my all 100%. And it was at that time that I crawled into his hand, this huge, massive hand. 
and I'm staring in his eyes. The blue is serene. Oh, miraculous eyes. They were just so beautiful. You just get lost in his eyes. He says, you knew me and turned your back. You mocked my Holy Spirit. You mocked my name. You don't deserve a second chance. And everything he said, I, I couldn't refute. All I could do was shudder. He was right. I had no defense. And he said, but I'm a gracious God. And I'm going to forgive you. And I'm going to give you a second chance, even though you don't deserve it. And uh, he said, on two conditions, I said, whatever you want. He said, one was, you tell this, you tell this story to everyone and listen to it. And he said, the second one is, I need you to help gather the souls. I said, I don't understand. He said, I need you to gather the souls. He said, everything you were taught as a child, everything you were taught to believe in, is fixing to happen. The time is nigh. The end of the world. And there's a great spiritual battle taking place right now. And I need you. Help me. And I said, okay, Lord. And I've, I've told this story to everyone I can talk to about it. Um, God healed me. Miraculously cures. It just, it was gone. And uh, I've never been the same since then. I was just straight up mean. I persecuted Christians. Literally. And if God can save me, and if God can love me, He can love anybody. No man is beyond redemption. No woman. I care what you said, what you've done. He loves you. God is love. All he asks is you just take him by the hand. And so that's what I ask. Give him a chance. And in this due time, when God's ready to call me, I'm ready. But until then, I will spread his word and his love. And I pray that you take these words to heart.